The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. In the upper right this week, it's Professor Dave Chow. Pleasure to be here, as always. Excellent. How are things going in the old neighborhood today, Dave? Not too bad. Just watching your concrete guys pour, you know, mm-hmm. take up the street. It's nice. It looks uh, good. It's settling sure. hard. So That's what why, it's why is to do. this all sounding like code language for something else? <laughs> we're we're actually building a, an escape tunnel to Windsor right now. That's all starting from Berkeley. <laughs> oh my gosh, starting from Berkeley. That's this is an absolute <laughs> mess. Fine. I think, I think there's a meth lab over there or something. Uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> heard about it. Or you guys were playing with sticks, playing tic-tac-toe in the freshly poured concrete. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, I have expected my kids to do that, honestly. I'm waiting. You know, I'm, I'm taking, you know, like suggestions for like handprints, footprints, or Mel Brooks' sixth finger or something like that. So. Right. Claw prints. There we, <laughs> there we go. Let me tell you that a uh, single piece of uh, caution tape that they put up is going to deter even the most masterminded criminal who's going to attempt to write something in that concrete. I would prefer Joe out there on a milk crate with a BB gun, but that's not yeah, going to happen, is it? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, continuing with our introductions, we are favored today with the presence of Professor Stephen Manning from the Department of Retired. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How's it going, Stephen? I, I was going to say, you you blew my cover, Matt. I was going to say, thank God classes are finally over. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable, this guy. I, well, I still mean that because, you know, you know my situation. So classes are, are kind of over. They are kind of over. However, we do have uh, the affectionately nicknamed Dangling Monday of Dead Week next week, where a great number of profs, the day before final start, will continue to deliver new content. <laughs> and we've all we've always said Stephen's got no class anyway. So I mean, right? So. He actually, <laughs> yes, this will be on the final exam tomorrow morning. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know what? Though I, I just got off of a little impromptu meeting where some very uh, let's. Let's talk about nice things. Um, so um, from our department in chemistry, biochemistry with physics, uh, Bob Ross, after a great many decades working at the university is retiring and Megan Murray has engineered all of the students who are currently in his classes to converge on the last actual class meeting he's going to have. He is one of the people who will be lecturing. On Monday. Oh, <laughs> and they're all going to show up with a bunch of cookies and like clap for him. And I think that that's just a, that's cool. That's, That's a cool nice. thing. Yeah. And cookies. And cookies. Yes, exactly. 11.30 a.m. or whatever, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, continuing around the horn here, uh, Center Square. That's an important one, Professor Heather Hill. Oh, I am, I am in the center. You know who <laughs> else is having cookies for his, good, for his goodbye? Who's that? President Garibaldi. Oh, and, and, and ice cream. Uh, and ice, cream. ice cream. Yeah. Yes. Oh, man. Ooh. I just, That's what I know, hear. I don't know. Uh, shouldn't it be something a little bit more upscale, if you know mm, what I mean? Mm. I don't know. It's so just like, like Hagen does? <laughs> yeah, Hagen does, exactly. It probably will be something more upscale for those of us not being invited. Mm. Oh, that's correct. That's oh. correct, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I did see that the, because the, I, I think I've seen the signs you're referring to, Heather. They say ice cream with the president, but then there's a picture of cookies. So it definitely, there's a little mis-messaging there. Yeah, mm. a little bit. Yeah. It's Maybe. another secret code word from meth lab, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Our crack mar- upscale, upscale meth. You know? you, you, yeah. The university's crack marketing department. Yeah. No oh, doubt. gosh. I, I feel like we need to immediately move on from that. Will it be boundless ice cream? <laughs> oh, oh, I hope so. I really oh, hope so. Am I still in the center square? Or did I get knocked out? No, you're still, <laughs> still in the center square. You're still there. All right. You're still there. Thank you for being there because you bumped Charles Nelson Riley. I think he passed away a few years ago, but you know, you get the Hollywood Squares reference. He'll always be in my center square. So there you go. Yeah. Very nice. Waylon and Madam have got nothing on you. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, we are also joined today uh, by Professor Mara Livesey, who, who likes ice cream. I love ice cream, and I can only assume that the ice cream and cookies will become ice cream sandwiches. Oh, possibly. Oh, very good point. Very good point. A chip witch, if you will. That's the Eastern U.S. Chip witch. Absolutely. Um, it, it's, it is a little odd. It's sort of like nestled in the afternoon. And I wonder sometimes if things get scheduled that way on purpose. Like I, my mind wandered and I'm like, would you just put this right in the middle of an exam time slot and literally block a certain number of profs? And Someone students don't want attending. to be there. <laughs> what time Plugging. is he teaching? So Lisa mm-hmm. McDonnell is like looking at the final schedule. Let's see. Oh, that professor's giving a final. That professor, this is the time to have this get together. Saturday, 3.30 a.m. Yeah, oh. exactly. <laughs> well. Remember the Seinfeld? It's sort of an invitation. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yep. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, finishing off our introductions, uh, Professor Jim Tubbs is here, and we're very glad to have him. Also from the Department of Retired. Yes, hello, hello. Mm-hmm. Good to see you, Jim. retired, yes. <laughs> and how are things going for you? Well, so far, so good. So far, Excellent. so good. Excellent. I'm actually headed down to Hank's uh, uh, neck of the woods, part of it, uh, next weekend, because I'm going down to Wilmington, North Carolina for my 50th high school reunion. Wow. wow. Congratulations. That's wow. a big deal. Big deal. Look at that. <laughs> The palmetto cheese is ready. Oh, my palmetto gosh. cheese is raising its head. <laughs> Hank, if you don't mind, I think the cheese makes the most perfect segue. We are joined today by Ask the Professor's greatest supporter, uh, uh, Professor Hank Durkin, and we are very, very glad to have him with us uh, on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate being an honorary professor. Um, I served on a, on a committee with Heather earlier this year. And as compensation for doing all that work, she said, hey, you want to show up and ask the professor? And I said, okay, I'll do that. And I, I'm, I'm wondering, from having listened to all of her questions during the committee meetings, uh, Matt, how soon do I get tenure? <laughs> you already let, have. Let me tell you, make sure you write all this down, Hank, because you can claim it on your 22 taxes a year from now, 100%. It's a charitable contribution. Abs. <laughs> The compensation is in quotes. It, it exactly. also counts. It also counts as community service instead of picking up freeway trash. That's Perfect. only in three states, sure. and we're not Talk talking to my about parole those officers. Things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Folks, I think most of you are listening, but maybe not all uh, know how this works. This is a program. You can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, we'll send you a prize too. You can send us the questions in a number of ways. You can email us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook or Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. So we were sent in a series of questions. Very interestingly, they came under cover of night, delivered by Ninja. Good afternoon, professors. They knew what time it would be. The 15 questions in this set have one thing in common. The answers to each are individuals notable for having done or said something. A passing grade is a very generous and frankly, grade inflating 10 out of 15. For extra fun, there's an additional five answer teaser at the end. And these of course were sent in by none other than our friend and yours, Professor Stephen Manning. So thanks for sending those in, Stephen. Uh, Let's let's see what we can do with these. These are are cool. I I like the all over the map nature, Stephen, and you can just sit there and smirk knowing all the answers here. (laughs) <laughs> you sure? <laughs> uh, for those of us who remember the good old days, who wrote one of Saturday Night Live's most famous sketches? The one about a self-hating motivational speaker named Matt Foley, played, of course, by the late, great Chris Farley. Who wrote so, that? Jimmy Fallon, Tina Fey, Seth no. Meyer. No. Too late for Buck Henry. Mm-hmm. Who else Any was a ideas? writer back then? Yeah. He has, uh, since the time of this fantastic sketch, uh, moved on to some pretty serious drama. And what I will give you is he played a um, side role, not a main role, but a side role in what some people think is the greatest television show of all time. Good hint. 
<laughs> the hint is the greatest TV show of all time is the one where they do organic chemistry in every episode. It's Breaking Bad. Oh, that's his face. <laughs> Come on, Mara. This is in your wheelhouse. Come on. <laughs> Save our face. Brian Save our hide. Nope, not oh, Brian Cranston. Side roll. A side roll. Side roll. Side roll. He t- since a uh, final clue has turned that side role. Better call into- Saul. Yes, it's it's the actor Bob Odenkirk who plays oh. Saul the lawyer, and uh, they are just finishing up their final season of the unbelievably successful spinoff to Breaking Bad as well. Yeah, I just read that you can expect cameo roles. I think this is the last season oh. of uh, Saul, right? right? I think they're expecting cameo roles from both Cranston and uh, Jesse. Yep, Aaron oh, Paul. Wow. Yep, that's Aaron great. Paul. Yeah. So Bob Odenkirk was, uh, he's, he's a comedian's comedian, I would say for sure. Cause that is just about one of the funniest sketches ever, including watching David Spade crack up the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> when Farley crashes into that uh, glass table. Oh, God. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's so funny. Those are some pretty funny bits between those guys, you know, yep. back in the day, back in the or, day. Or like the gap girls is always one of my favorites too. So. <laughs> Belt it. Um, who composed the first work by a black woman to be played by a major U.S. orchestra? And, you know, uh, because it's a season of great inflation, I'll even take you trying to get at the year that that event took place. In the 20s, maybe? It wasn't the 20s, but it was soon after. 30s. The 30s. Oh, well, well <laughs> Very good. It was okay. 1933. Yeah. Does anybody know the name? Oh, Florence Price. Yeah, Florence Price. That's right. Hey. Yeah, Jim go. saves our hide. Yeah. Uh, she had termed it Symphony Number no. One, and it was uh, played by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And I heard the DSO play that about I don't know a month or two ago. Okay, excellent. It's a great symphony. She excellent. uses a lot of uh, of uh, um, like spirituals and bluesy kind of tunes in it. So it's very melodic. Very cool. Hmm. Professors, who said? It's important to me that we don't take a position of being content censors. I'll take either the name of the person or their position. Elon as the, Musk. Uh, you're you're in the wheelhouse. It's Zucker not Zuckerberg. Musk. Zuckerberg. Yeah. It's not. It's not. Mm-hmm. A very very famous music delivering apps CEO. Oh, Spotify. It's the Spotify CEO. Oh. Yes. Mm. Um, that's good for partial credit. What's his um, name? His name is Daniel Eck, is his name. Daniel Eck, uh-huh. yes. Daniel Eck. I, I, I like the expression on Mara's face when you mentioned <laughs> I assume it's about the Joe Rogan stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, probably going to get into a lot of trouble if someone listens to the show, but somebody I know on I Facebook may or may not listens. have posted um, <laughs> that Joe Rogan does have a show coming up in Detroit and they're like got my tickets and I'm like biting my knuckles just biting my knuckles who was the first black recipient of a Pulitzer Prize for any category ooh dead ooh. silence ooh. Scott Joplin Mm-mm. no that's a good guess uh, I can give you the clue that it was 1950 when this award went out like one of the Supreme court justice um what's his um um um, um why am i like mm-hmm. blanking on this i don't she know heather play. it's the play she's a playwright you know it doesn't say the area oh i can tell you that it was for a collection titled annie allen was the name of the piece oh no then i don't think it is oh. initials g b george burns oh no, no. uh her name was Gwendolyn Brooks. Gwendolyn Brooks, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that Heather was going there, but uh... well, not quite. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> and it just says, um, with all due respect, Stephen, the second collection, Annie Allen. Uh, is it a collection of poetry? Uh, we'll have to get our crack team on that. She is a poet, I think. Yeah, there I you think go. Poetry. Primarily, yeah. Go. So I'm sorry well, to interrupt. But... No, that's uh, fine. What filmmaker is the first person to be nominated for best director? Oscar, duh, in six different decades. Wow, this is a good piece of trivia. Say again, please. Which filmmaker is the first person to be nominated for Best Director Oscar from six different decades? This is amazing. Billy Wilder? Ford? Francis, Francis Ford Coppola? Uh, I think you need to think about the modern era. Modern era. Modern. Or Zazie? Uh, 
Spielberg. Ang Lee? Uh, yeah, no. so it goes to Mara. It's Steven Spielberg. Spielberg. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, right. Because he All just right. got the 2022 nom for his West Side Story. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Fantastic to remake musical. West Side Story. <laughs> it was pretty good the first time, I, I gotta say. Yeah. Romeo and Juliet and all that crap. <laughs> Hey, now that DiCaprio, <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. I love that. That I grew up with that stuff. Oh, jeez. Well, no, I can. We know. We know. <laughs> <laughs> what? That indictment against Matt's taste on I Romeo and Juliet? I, we <laughs> can tell. <laughs> oh. It's crazy. Okay, whatever. I'm going to go back to pruning my clematis now. Um, <laughs> professors, who's the first Black woman to lead one of the 12 regional reserve banks of the Federal Reserve? in the Federal Reserve's 108-year history. She's a University of Michigan economist and administrator. She was provost, recently selected to head the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Who is this? Yikes. She identifies as Jamaican-American, has an undergrad degree from Harvard, and her doctorate is MIT. Pretty slick. Wow. Woo. And we don't know who she is. Some tough trivia, Stephen. Yeah, I was I gonna say, oh, yeah. You, you want you want that coffee mug with the coffee, don't you? <laughs> and the five pounds of coffee. I'll uh, thread her. First uh, and last initial S C. We've heard about her in the news. First and last initial S C. Susan. Yep. It is Susan Collins. Yeah. It's Susan Collins. Yeah. Oh exactly. no way. <laughs> Very, very good. Wow. We did it. Teamwork. <laughs> how Teamwork I, makes the how we have no idea, right? That's how the women do it. <laughs> no, it's true. Teamwork. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Who said, I am a broken piece of machinery. I am ready. February 3rd, 1924, among his last words to his wife, after never having fully recovered from a stroke. Henry Ford? mm Thomas Edison. We can tell you his. Uh, you know, it was Wilson. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say Wilson. his wife's name was Edith. So, for the record, that was five years of suffering the effects of the stroke in 1919. Oh, wow. Who, after a 10 year relationship with Picasso, went on to marry Jonas Salk, famous for developing the polio vaccine? Ooh. Wow. Mrs. Man. Jonas Salt. Yeah, yeah, the Mrs. Good answer. Partial ex, credit. The ex Partial, Mrs. Picasso. Partial credit. Uh, I'm surprised. Ooh. I'm surprised. Initials F G. These are tough, Stephen. These are Francis, tough. Francis. Fran. Annie. Ferdinand. <laughs> I'm, gri- I'm giving you Fran as partial credit. It says here it's Francois Gila is what it says. Gilo. Mm-hmm. I'm like, those are some pretty famous people to align yourself with. Mm-hmm. I was done with Picasso, so I moved on to Salt. Like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> who holds the world record as the youngest person who wrote, produced, and performed a Billboard number one? Michael Jackson. Yeah. Mm-mm. Youngest person. Younger? It would have been um, a contemporary of Jackson after he had become super duper famous. After. 1988. Contemporary. Prince? Rick James? Mm-mm. Who's contemporary? Contemporary mean popular at the same time, to be clear. Mm-hmm. Well, like Janet Jackson? Nope. Oh. The year was 1988. Um, the song was Foolish Beast. This is a tough one. Foolish Beast? That mm-hmm. was a billboard number one? It was a billboard number one, 1988. Can you sing, Can you sing it for us? Oh, yeah. I yeah. Have a couple bars. <laughs> will so not do that. Absolutely. Oh. Foolish Beast. Uh, last clue. We're doing a lot of initials today. I know Kathy is oh, smiling up in heaven. Uh, the initials are DG. Just think about it for a minute. You'll get it. Oh, so he says confidently. Yeah, with the answer in front of him. Uh, DG. Very, very young female performer. DG. DG, you said? Mm-hmm. 
Debbie Gibson. Debbie Gibson is the oh, correct answer. There we go. The mall princess. Go. Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Yep. And Brooke, I was gonna I was gonna go Tiffany, but oh well. Oh. Broke the original record sent by um, if I remember correctly, because he wrote, produced, and performed uh, with the Beach Boys, Brian Wilson. Don't worry, baby. I have that one in my back pocket for my students every once in a while. I'm like, how did that one single that you wrote at age 18 and produced and actually directed and performed and got revered by the Beatles? How did that go for you? Yeah, so, not as good. Yeah, not yeah as the good. only thing that was single when, when I was 18 was me. So, I mean. <laughs> what was the pen name adopted by Gloria Watkins, who recently passed? Dan Maggio? Oh, no, uh, no dance. Sharon today. Creech. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Think lowercase letters. Katie Lang? Mm -mm. No, no. Good no. guess. No. Good guess. Um, all, all, all no, lowercase. I know. Oh, God, it's a famous fe feminist. <laughs> it is a famous I'm feminist. blanking on it. Oh, oh um, um, something. Bell Hooks. Bell, it's oh, bell yeah. Hooks. That is yes. Thank you, Jim. Hooks. Yep, bell hooks. She derived the name from her great grandmother. She said she wrote it in lowercase to shift identity away from herself towards her ideas. By the way, very, very interesting connection to Detroit Mercy. When I was an undergrad in 1994, bell hooks came to speak at campus and there was um, a, quite a number of things that happened as a result of that. Yeah, I'll just leave it, it at I that. Oh, yeah, vague. <laughs> Wait a yes. minute, is this like putting jello in the fountain or something like that again? <laughs> uh, no, that was like oh. uh, that was like a bubble bath in the fountain. Okay. Yeah. Besides, or, or there was the one time it was Kool-Aid, but uh, yeah. yeah. Was... Well, come on. Beth Olger still hasn't forgiven me for putting the uh, bullion cubes on in the shower heads either. So <laughs> her explanation for the, uh, I remember when I read this, her explanation struck me as uh, uh, being anti-narcissist, narcissist. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. take the attention away from her towards right sure. yeah. well i remember jane shaberg started doing the same thing oh did she oh she started yep yeah, writing her name that. and everything else in small case i wonder it if it was it rather difficult to interpret her emails sometimes <laughs> because no no sentence ever started with a capital letter. oh that's interesting uh, what famous person was and i think it's safe to say quite ironically afraid of the dark afraid of crowds and afraid of solitude Afraid of crowds and afraid of solitude? Yeah, that's and the kind of dark. problematic. Yeah, like Stephen King? Uh, you're in the right wheelhouse. I can tell you that it was oh. a, a film director. Oh. Alfred Hitchcock? It was Hitchcock, yeah. Oh. It was actually Alfred Hitchcock. Sort of makes sense. You can get inside the mind of that stuff if you know it well, right? So I don't know who he liked to be with. He didn't like to be alone. He didn't like to be with crowds grace kelly thank you grace for kelly to be with yeah. grace kelly tippy hedron yeah, exactly yeah. exactly who's the first woman to be nominated twice for the best director oscar jane she campion just, yeah it was jane jane, uh, jane, jane campion okay. uh power of the dog was the very recent yeah. one yeah okay. mm -hmm. A Oscars broadcast Great. to be known by only one thing that happened and not the movies for the rest oh. of time what are you talking about? Hmm? <laughs> Which American first lady That's was the a power of the slap? Yeah, yeah. there yeah. we go. The there slap. we go. Which American first lady was a compulsive shopper who ran up huge debts that she tried to hide by falsifying bills and misappropriating Mary Todd funding? Lincoln. Yes, it was Mary Lincoln. That's absolutely correct. If only my wife were here in her study of the first ladies, she would know. The QVC that. of the Lincoln administration, right? QVC. Has she seen the first ladies, uh, uh, the, the show? She has. That yes. one? Yeah. Yes. That looks interesting. Yeah. Who was the first black woman and the first female college player to be enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame and the first woman to be officially drafted by an NBA Lisa franchise. Leslie? No, that's a good guess, though. Uh, Swin Cash? Mm -mm. This was actually in the mid 70s. A long time oh. ago. Nice connection to Detroit with the Swin Cash okay. reference. Very All right. nice. Okay, hold on. 70s female 
Oh, was she the one that played for the Harlem Globetrotters there for a bit too? You know, there may have been some crossover, uh, more background. She led the Delta State there in Cleveland, Mississippi, women's basketball team to three consecutive national championships in the 70s. She was drafted by the New Orleans Jazz, of course, now the Utah Jazz. And she scored the first basket in women's Olympic basketball history. It's a good name to know. Her name is Lucy Harris. Lucy Harris. And now we know her. And I think there is a documentary about her on HBO, I think. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it, but they've done the doc. The, the Queen of Basketball is the name of the thing, which was her sort of... Her big nickname. Nickname, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just a couple more here, professors, and perfectly timed. Thanks for these questions, Stephen. They're great. Who reportedly was the first actress to show her navel on national television? Barbara Eden. Barbara Eden. It's not what it says here. Don Wells? No. Tina Louise? Uh, no. Now, well. I always heard that the first first run television show that showed a woman's navel on television the was the original Star- series of Star Trek. Oh, Nichelle Nichols? It's not what it says here. But Yvonne it was Craig? A, uh, it says here it was Yvette Mimou. And I want oh. to say that it was in an episode of Star Trek. No, it was in an episode of Dr. Kildare. She Dr. Played Dr. Kildare. Right. Okay. She played a okay. surfer and Got she it. died. She yeah. played a oh. surfer who had epilepsy. Yep. And she fell off her board with a with an epileptic fit and, and ended up in the hospital where Kildare oh, was the gosh. she woke up with Kildare, you know, right looking at her, and they were, they had an interesting situation. <laughs> of, course, <laughs> of course, Kildare, Richard Chamberlain, the character the the ca- I remember I that he was because it was, a, it was there, a, but he was, it was a two Campbell episode was show. Oh, huh? it was I, a remember, cliffhanger. I remember at the beginning of that show, Jim, you probably did too if you saw it. Her before she fell off the thing, the board, her eyes fluttered. Yes, and then she she blacked out and went down, hit her head in the board, and the rest was part of the show, of course. So much TV, and that's how I she know. had ended up in the hospital in the first place before yeah. she fell in love with Dr. Kildare, right. Apparently, this was a very memorable episode. Uh, absolutely. I remember the show like it was yesterday. It, that yeah, belly it was button. a double. It was, it was continued, you know, over two episodes. Sure, ah, sure. Yeah. And in the hospital, she had a roommate who looked a lot like Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, my God. Don't we call that. Wow. Wow. I'm in awe right I, I'm now. Just, I'm just waiting for you to reenact the entire episode. I know. Yeah. Well, I was fascinated do. by Yvette, of course. And my yes. mother, my mother had a huge crush on Richard Chamberlain. So, so does Beth. So we so watched does Beth, as a, remember? As a, kind of a family. My father would be out one night of the week at his Army <laughs> Reserve meeting. So we would watch this, me and my two brothers, my mother, and at least my mother and I were watching this thing with our mouths agape for different reasons, but <laughs> fond childhood memory. Uh, okay. Professors, we have, a, we have a bonus question. It's a good one. It's a good one. Name the five artists or performing groups who've had a top 40 single in each of the last four decades. There are one, two, three, four, five of them. Can you name, frankly, any of them? Stones. The Beatles. Beatles is incorrect. Oh. The Stones. Stones oh. is incorrect. What's the, oh, it is? The who? What's the question again? I'm, I apologize. Name the five artists or groups who've had a top 40 single in each of the past four decades. So I believe we're starting with the 2010s oh, okay. and going backwards. Oh. Um, or whatever you want to call them. The teens? I don't know. Okay. All right. So let's... Springsteen? Springsteen is not there. Beyonce. Beyonce is not there. She's R.E.M. Not R.E.M. is not old there. enough. Yeah, four decades. She, yeah, four she's decades. not 50. Four. Decade. So who? Well, she could have been. She could have been making music in a row. We never would really know. Yeah, that's true. So who, okay, who's big in the eighties? Okay, so who was I listening to in college? That didn't warp my mind. You too. You too is on the list. Yes. That's one. Yes. Okay. Uh, the cranberries. Nope. Not no. Cranberries. What's off? I'm surprised. I'm, yeah, I'm really just trying surprised. to think who stretched out. Yeah, because that was always Come one of the on. questions I would ask my students. Who in contemporary music is going to linger around for like the next dozen years? And, you know, it always stump them. We're getting close to the end of our show. So it's time for some like, real serious clue. Like Annie Lennox. Uh, How about? Oh, that's a good one. 
possibly the single greatest grossing performer of all time by way of album sales and concerts. Elvis? Elvis. No. Uh, Madonna? Madonna is on the oh, list. Madonna. Yes. Madonna is on the list. Oh, Elton John. Elton John is Ooh. not on the list. <gasps> Billy Joel. I was hoping when I gave the clue I just gave that you go in the direction of someone who's already been mentioned during our show. Michael Jackson is uh, on the list. Uh, There's been several posthumous releases, so creepy, but okay. you know, true. Oh, what about Prince? Yeah. Prince is not on the list. Oh. One, of the, one of the other people is a very, very well-known instrumental performer that frankly a lot of people make fun of, but he has quite a following. Kenny G? Kenny G is on the list. <laughs> yes. Ah. And last but most certainly not least, just letting you know you're gonna kick yourself. He usually does not go by his given name, Alfred Matthew Yankovic. Weird Al. Oh, Weird Al. Weird Al. Yeah. Weird Al. Yes. Top that 40. Is, that's, four a decades. Height, that's a height of, you know. Yeah. That's, that's pretty solid right there. Weird Al. And who is it? I think somebody's doing a movie about him. Really? Yeah. They're doing a, a Weird Al nice. biopic. Weird Al documentary. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Oh, professors, tons of fun. Thanks again for sending the question, Stevens. Uh, Stevens, Steven, we'll try again. There's only one of you. Wait, you come in six packs. It's time for us to say goodbye, Jim. Bye. Mara. Bye. Heather. Bye-bye. Steven. Bye. Dave. See ya. And Hank. Bye. Thank you, honored. <laughs> Thanks, Hank. And now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. Ask the Professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. As the Professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>